this video we're going to prove the Pythagorean theorem and we're going to use a geometric proof as opposed to say an analytic or Cartesian proof and that is we're not going to use a Cartesian coordinate system we're just going to use plain geometry so this would be the way that Pythagoras himself proved it or something like this so here's the idea we start with a triangle here's one leg AC is a leg C is a right angle, CB is a leg, and AB is the hypotenuse. We construct a square that corresponds to the leg AC. So the area of this square, uh, we, can, we can say it's AC squared. That would be the area of this little piece here. And we construct a square that corresponds to the leg CB. So this area here, we could call it CB squared, where CB stands for the length of this segment C to B. And finally, we construct a square corresponding to the hypotenuse AB, and we call that AB squared, that uh, big square there. So what we are saying then, or what the Pythagorean theorem says then, in terms of these uh, squares and these uh, line segments is that the line segment AC squared plus the length of the line segment BC squared is equal to the length of the line segment AB squared. That's what we want to prove and again we're going to use a geometric proof. Let's close that and here's how we're going to do it. Let me walk, use my little prompts here. First thing we do is we consider these two triangles, the pink and the blue triangle. If you look at them, they look similar. In fact, they look congruent. It looks like you could transform one into the other by just rotating. You could rotate this side onto that side, and this side onto that side, and they'd be the same triangle. Uh, so it certainly intuitively looks like we're dealing with the same areas there. In fact, the same triangles just rotated 90 degrees from one another. But let's put a little more substance in that. We can do that by using a theorem from plane geometry. Let's look at these sides, first of all. This side is equal to this side because they're both sides of the same square. I mean, we constructed these squares uh, on each side, so we know that these are equal by construction. The same down here. This side is equal to this side, since they're both sides of a square. Now, what about these angles in here around A? What's going on there? Well, here's a 90 degree angle. Here's a 90 degree angle. And here's a common piece in each of the angles that we're going to be looking at. Well, let's put a little substance in there. Here's one angle. The first angle goes from here to here, so it's 90 degrees plus a little piece, and the blue angle is 90 degrees plus that same little piece, so those two angles are the same. The red angle and the blue angle are equal. So we can use a theorem from plane geometry called side angle side. We have side angle side, side angle side, so our intuition about those two triangles is correct. Uh, they are congruent and therefore they have the same area. Alright, so what next? Let's look at this blue triangle. How do we compute the area of the blue triangle? Remember the formula for the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. So what's the base and what's the height? We can look at it like this. Let's say that this is the base from here to here, from A to D is the base. We could say that this is the base. Uh, either one is fine, but it's better to use A to D for, for our purposes. So to get the area of this thing, we have to extend that base up here a certain amount. And then drop a perpendicular from here over to here. So that's a perpendicular. Let me put a little perpendicular mark in there just to remind us of that. 
So the area of this blue triangle is the base times the height times one half. Let's uh, put a little B in here just to remind us of that. So this is the base here. And it goes from here to here. A little messy. And this is the height up here. So the area is the one half the base times the height. Now, what can we do with this blue triangle? Well, watch our next step. Watch, watch this corner up here. I'm sliding it along this line here, which is parallel to the base. And if I do that, the height doesn't change. The height is still this thing here. The height before was this. It's still the same here, since I slid that point along a line parallel to the base. I don't change the height, and therefore I don't change the area. So let me go back. There's the original triangle, and I slide that point C down. Area is exactly the same. Let's get rid of our temporary marks. Now let's look at the red triangle. What can we do with that? We're going to slide it. Where are we going to slide it? Well, let's pick a point. Looks like B would be a good point to work with. The area of the red triangle, let's look at that again. We take this as our base. F to A is our base. We get the area. We're going to extend it out this way. We're going to drop a perpendicular down from here to there. I'm going to put a little perpendicular marker in there just to remind us of that. So the area of the red triangle now is this base here, which is from here to here. And this is the height over here, this little piece here. All right, now watch what we do with that point B. You can probably guess where it's going to go. We're going to slide it. Where are we going to slide it? We're going to slide it up to C. So we go from B to C. And take it back again, and you can watch it. We're going to take this point here and slide it along here. And notice what happens to the height. It's the same here as it was here, since we moved this in a parallel uh, fashion relative to the base. So this pink triangle now is has the same area as the original pink triangle. Right, let's get rid of our little helpers there. All right, what next? Well, look at this. This is half of this square, and this is the blue triangle is half of this little piece down here. So our next statement is going to be that this square up here is equal to this rectangle down here. All right, so we're halfway there. What are we going to do next? Well, now we're going to focus on this piece here and this piece here and go through the same argument, basically, and show that they're the same. So let's go through that with a little more speed. So focusing on that square, we look at these two triangles. And again, they're congruent. You can see that just by in your mind, rotating this to that and this leg down to that. Now, this leg is the same as that since they're both part of the same square. And this leg is the same as that since they're both part of the same square. We can get a little more formal like we did before and use the side angle side theorem from plane geometry. So those two triangles are congruent and therefore they have the same area. Now we're going to go through our sliding exercise. We're going to slide some points uh, in such a way as to not change the area, but change the, the shape of the two triangles. OK, and that's how we slide them. Let's, let's go. That was a little fast. Let's go through that again. Let's look at the blue. How are we going to slide the blue? Well, we want, remember, 
inverse. We want to show something about this little region in here. We're actually going to slide the blue from here down to here. And that's going to be parallel to this base, so uh, the area doesn't change. Well, let's go to our argument that we did a moment ago. How do we see the area of the blue triangle? Well, we extend that base. We drop a perpendicular from C down to that extended base. We put a little marker in there, a little perpendicular marker. And uh, what do we do next? Well, we call this the height. And this thing from here to here, we call the base. So the area of the blue triangle is one half the base times the height. Now we're going to slide both of them together. But just watch the blue for now. Watch this point C where it goes. So I'm watching this point up here, and it's going to slide down to here, so the height doesn't change. Here was the height of the original blue triangle. Down here it's the same, so that area is the same. And the same with the red. Let's, let's go back and look at where the red was originally. We're going to take this point and slide it along here, which is parallel to this base. So if we slide here to here, we don't change the area of the red triangle either. So we'll go back and forth one time, and you can see that we're sliding things in the right way. So areas are the same. Uh, the pink triangle has the same area as the blue triangle, and therefore this big square here, which is twice the pink, is the same as this rectangle, area of this rectangle, which is twice the blue. So we conclude that these two uh, figures, the square and the rectangle, have the same area. So putting it all together then, we have that the dark pink is equal to the dark blue, light pink is equal to the light blue, so this square plus this square is equal to this hypotenuse squared. In other words, we have Pythagorean theorem. So this AC squared, which is this pink box, plus BC squared, which is this light pink box, is equal to AB squared, which is the blue box. So pink plus pink equals blue, and that's the proof of the geomet of the Pythagorean theorem. That's the geometric proof of the Pythagorean theorem.